Alrighty. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Make Better Wedding Films, the home of new ideas for radical films about people in love. My name is Ben. I will be your host, and I'm joined across the ditch from everyone's uh, favorite van lifers, Bottle Bosch Films. Uh, hey. And today we've just got Grace in the yeah. co-host seat. How's it going, mate? Oh, pretty good. Girls represent. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the two girls. That's the two girls on the line today. You're one of the girls, yeah. man. One of the girls. Sweet. All right. I'll, I'll take it. We don't need Andrew. Um, yeah, we don't. We, we don't need Andrew. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, today basically today uh, we got Grace on the line, and we're going to talk through um, her latest edit, an absolute monster nine minute masterpiece. It's been blowing up at Instagram the last few days. Um, Shamara and Tyler's film. And yeah. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen the film yet, pause this episode. We'll have a link in the description. Go and watch it because this episode is going to make a lot more sense if you've seen the film. We're going to do our best for our audio listeners at home um, to follow along. But basically we're going to sort of strip this film back to the bones, do a sort of editing breakdown, go through everything that Grace uh, did to make the film. We've got a bunch of questions through from Instagram and um, yeah, we're just going to hear from Grace around how she how she did it. <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> uh, sweet. So, um, but uh, yeah, before we get into the show, we've got a couple of quick announcements to get through. Uh, the first of which is the fact that this episode is sponsored by Musicbed. And so, uh, Grace, my first question to you is, could this film have happened without music bed? <laughs> oh, very, very smooth. Uh, no, but it could not have. It definitely could not have happened without music bed. That again is music bed, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I actually did use a shitload of the music there. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. No, nah, so, I mean, like, this film is absolutely jam packed with, I mean, how, how many songs are in the film? There's literally nine songs in the film. There's so. nine <laughs> songs in the That's film. All of them the are freaking bangers. And so, yeah, I mean, Music Bed is, if if you want the best music, if you, if you want to make a film like uh, the one we're about to talk through today, you need to go to m- 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 musicbed.com uh, and sign up for their wedding subscription. Use the promo code MBWF. You'll get a month free, uh, your first month free, and uh, you can start using music just like this. So, um, yeah. Basically, that's uh, that's our music bed promo. Uh, one more announcement before we get into the show is that uh, if you guys want to support the show, obviously you can use um, go on to music bed and use our promo code. But the other way you can support the show is via the Patreon. So Patreon is a platform that lets you directly support content creators that you love. Um, if you go to patreon.com forward slash mbwf, you can sign up for as little as a dollar for fifty an episode. You can cancel anytime you like. And basically, patrons get some really awesome bonuses like a QA thread to ask our guests uh, questions ahead of the episode and things like that. So, yeah, if you want to learn more about that, just go to patreon.com forward slash mbwf. Alrighty, that's enough for the announcements. <laughs> uh, on with the show. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, basically, I think let's start uh, just with a bit of a background of this wedding. And because um, this was a US wedding that you guys didn't shoot, do you want to sort of give us a little rundown of, uh, yeah, what this wedding was all about from your guys' standpoint? Yeah, so basically Shamara and Tyler just found us online after Shamara did like a very deep dive stalk of wedding videographers. Um, fun fact, she actually hated wedding videos before she saw us. <laughs> that sounds so wanky yeah. when I say it out loud. Well, she did um, say, and she, she she does say in, in the film that she, um, uh, what is it, hates uh, or doesn't believe in soulmates. Yes, she's actually and, like yeah. not super, um, she's not cheesy Romantic. at all. Yeah. Which is why I love her. Um, mm. No, but these, yeah, these guys found us. Um, we were all set to go over to the US to shoot their wedding, and then obviously COVID, ha, huh? the mm-hmm. final word that we all love so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we ended up hiring a US videographer to shoot on our behalf, Eugene, and yeah, smashed it from there basically. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And because I, I guess it's. Um, was it very uh, different for you because you're in this unique s- s- situation where you guys have split the roles out where Andrew shoots, you edit, you're mm-hmm. never 
filming a wedding anyway. So was it, was there any sort of worry for you going into this particular wedding, the fact that it wasn't going to be Andrew's footage? Yeah, I mean, not honestly. For me, it's not, it's mm. not an issue because we've hired videographers before to shoot for us. Like, mm. you know, we get double ups and, and things like that. But it was it was slightly more a question mark because we'd never worked with um, Eugene before and because it was so far away and things like that. But um, Andrew did like a lot of talking with Eugene and like a lot of briefing and stuff and we already like – Every time we find a videographer to shoot for us, it's like we're doing our research. We're making sure they have a similar style. They've got lots of movement in their footage. So we'd already knew that Eugene's style was awesome and that it would fit into ours pretty well so that we could just like workshop stuff and it would be just amplified, like it would be, you know, bottle brushy, so to speak. Yeah, awesome. And so in terms of your preps, obviously you, you've got your prep with the videographer and then what was the – um interactions with a couple like in terms of um prepping that would you were you meeting like on zoom with everyone together or were you just sort of meeting with a couple separately and then just briefing eugene yeah we zoomed the couple a couple of times i think we zoomed them two or three times and once we realized we couldn't shoot their wedding be there in person we zoomed with eugene as well which was a very good move because Mm. Eugene was great in that chat and they loved him instantly and we all got to have a big talk and they got to get to know him as well. Um, we also had the planner in the chat as well because that's, uh, that's like such a weird, um, <laughs> yeah. awesome planner. But also it was super um, different for us because like Australia, we just don't really have planners like the norm here, whereas in the US mm. it's like normal for them to have planners be a part of every part of the process and do a lot of the booking and things like that. So mm. um, she was in the chat and it was super helpful because she was coordinating a lot of stuff with us, which was great. Mm, nice. Yeah, cool. good old Zoom. And, yeah, good old Zoom. <laughs> We're all familiar with that now. Um, oh, yeah. And so how like, – once you realized you weren't going to make it, was there any um, change for you in terms of like just making sure that you um, had everything that you were going to need in terms of like um, knowing what kind of film was going to gonna suit these guys? Like – um, what, what were you, what are some of the things you do, whether it was different for this wedding or just how you work in general, how are you, um, what's your interactions with a c- couple like before the wedding, um, you know, to make sure that you're, when you're mucking around in the editing, coming up with all, all, all these ideas to make sure they're sure they're g- going to suit the couple. Yeah, that's a cool one because I actually think mm. we did more pre-production for these guys than we ever have for anyone Mm. and that might have been more so because we weren't actually going to be there so we kind of had to and because it's you know overseas like it's not like we can talk in person with a videographer and things like that um you know have that connection that you would with someone in australia but um yeah we did a lot more pre-production for them they because you know we met them and we were like okay these guys are super fun out there i mean Shamara is a knockout. Like she models as well, so she's used to be in front of a camera, which I knew was going to make this like a really epic film, and that we could push it with mm-hmm. them a bit and do some more setup things and things like that. So that's what we yeah. talked to Eugene about that kind of thing, like setting things up a bit more, which leans into his style anyway. So it was perfect. He loves directing. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was. It was. It's you know you, you can kind of tell when you meet a couple what their vibe is and what you'll need for the edit a little bit. Like we've started doing that more. Like these guys are a bit more cinematic. We're going to have to get on the gimbal more and do some kind of more grandiose shots and things like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was <laughs> so no, much to it. Yeah, it's interesting because one of the things I noticed with this edit is there's heaps of um, the kind of um, posed photo shoot, you know, photo um, yes. footage. Like there's heaps, there's pl- bucket loads of it, heaps of it throughout the whole film. Um, and so, yeah, was that like a big part of like, like you knew you were going to want a lot of that ahead of, ahead of time? Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, cause you take, I mean, you talk, I mean, if you, you have a chat with Shamar and Tyler straight away, you know, mm. like, you and you know, they're going to be up for it. So it's, it's easy to kind of know that they're going to be okay with it, that being so set up not everyone likes that not every couple wants mm. to be as set up as probably they were but they've hired photographers that lean into that style eugene leans into that style so it kind of mm. it made sense and it was natural for them um i wouldn't do it with every couple i wouldn't set up mm. people to that degree but it just depends yeah. on what your vibe is mm. and because we, we've talked to um a few videographers now on the show 
um, who who lean more towards that sort of pre-production side of things, you know, the likes of Fire and Ice and stuff. Oh, um, yes. Like is sort of have like chatting with those guys and doing this kind of wedding that is more pre-production heavy, um, you know, did it feel like quite different compared to your usual sort of style? Yeah, for sure. We've yeah. I think we've actually built a brand for ourselves where we're – um we don't set things up like we are kind of more known for making kind of the rough and raw stuff magnificent and so this is like a different mm. direction for us and like andrew's starting to you know i'm always like you gotta direct more and he's starting to get more excited about directing and and mm. pre-planning shots like we've got a wedding coming up um this couple james <coughs> and ryan and theirs is going to be like they're obsessed with disney and beauty and the beast and their wedding is yeah. like bougie as ballroom um and so we're already talking about like okay let's go through the if I go through the film Beauty and the Beast and pick out shots that we can mimic and cover in that same style and can I give you a shot list and you do it and Andrew's like, yes, let's do this because um, that's that's when shit gets better, right? I mean, yeah. that's why Fire and Ice is so good. Their stuff blew me mm. away. They they set up so much. I could, you know, they're a tear to the, themselves, I think. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's, it, 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 it had a vibe of like just, something different compared to the rest of your films and i think it probably came through from some of that um yeah i think because shamar just that, is a, just that little model, element yeah. of yeah yeah i think yeah, i knew I think she was gonna be excited element, about that stuff yeah yeah like you could tell that they were comfortable posing they were comfortable being in, intimate together um they were comfortable in being in front of the camera playing with the camera um and yeah it just came through in the footage there's just heaps of Heaps of that sort of footage, which meant that you could put it through, 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 through the whole film. Um, so yeah, I guess let's just let's just crack in and start to break through, uh, break down some of the actual sort of editing sides of things. First question is, um, how long did it take? That was one of the questions that came through on Instagram. Oh, Instagram! Um, mm. It took a long fucking time. <laughs> it's, mm. it's. I think it took about. I think it took about just under three weeks. It was a long edit. Yeah. Um, for mm. we- for wedding world, that is like I don't. Mm. It's not a long edit for most people, and not wedding world. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But it's the longest I've spent on an edit for a wedding to date. So that yeah. was, but it was refreshing because that was a totally different style for us, and a lot of it was I just was excited to really push myself and do something completely mm. different. So it didn't feel like three weeks; it felt like five days. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Cool. I like I like that feeling when you get stuck in and you're excited and time oh, goes fast so and good. yeah, that's great. Yes. Um cool. Okay. So let's start at, at the beginning. How do how do you start and edit in terms of like file structure, project management? How are you setting yourself up at the beginning? And was there anything different with this one? Uh no, I was, nothing was different. It's the same thing I do every single time. I'm like pretty robot about how I do it at this yeah. stage um, in the setup when it comes to like the creativity yeah. it's not robot but the um, <laughs> file management yeah. I love I'm yeah. anal as fuck about it um, I mean what do you want to know like uh, I well it's just like I don't know everyone everyone has their their way of, of, of doing it and stuff but how like how do you um, approach the start of the editing process in terms of like um, do you start just jumping straight into uh, searching through footage and getting like footage, footage selects? Do you start multi oh, yeah. Do you do you transcode footage first? Like, what's the sort of stuff that you just go in and it's just like tick tick tick? Do this 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 this, but b- before you start sort of having fun. Ah, uh, okay. All the nitty gritty. Um, all the nitty gritty <laughs> boring nitty gritty. shit you've got to do first. That all makes things faster in the long run. Yes, but when you perfect that stuff, that's when you your job's easier and everything and your creativity is better. So like everyone's, you know, it stresses me out when I go into like people's projects and it's just like stuff isn't filed and it's not in Mm. folders and it's everywhere. I'm like, how can you work like this? Like you can't can't find, you can't find anything. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think it's important to start with this kind of boring shit first, because for this kind of film, this kind of super complex nine minute film, you're not going to make it if you're like, um, setting like sort of got a messy file structure and a messy project from the get go. So yeah, let's talk through some of the boring shit first. 
Yeah, well, basically I've got like a premiere um, project that is used default that I open every single time I start a project and it's already got my folders set up so I'm never creating things from scratch. Like it's all ready to go. I can know where to dump my audio, have a folder for my footage, folder for my pluralized syncing, folder for assets like flares and shit. Um, there's even a timeline of flares pre-done with all the opacity effects on it. So for every project mm-hmm. it's just ready to go. Um, same with sound effects. That's like all lined up in its own sequence and premiere for this kind of mm. template that I've got going. Um, so it just makes life easier. And I dump everything and I proxy because 4K footage mm. on this fucking M1 is not, does not play back well. So I've got to yeah. proxy everything now. Um, yeah. Yeah. But after that, it's, you know, it's just filing. It's just all that systematic stuff. Um, and then I just basically straight up start with speech selects and go from there. Cool. So yeah. So speech selects. Do you do you like multicam or anything first? No, I don't actually multicam. Um, I think I all my footage once I've proxied it, I sync it in pluralize, and then I just I don't know why I've just never really liked multicamming. I've done it before. Mm. I just it's not part of my workflow. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I just, I just straight cut everything. I'm I'm pretty manual. Yeah, I think I'm, I do. I'm, yeah. Because I I do it out of habit, but. I find for the highlight film, I barely actually use it. I I yeah. use it I use it for like the like the full ceremony edits. I find that really helpful. I can just literally just chuck the whole ceremony on like double time and just have my angles open and just quickly just switch like s- switch between angles, and that's a fast way to cut the full ceremony edits. But in terms of the actual highlight film, no, I I don't I've I've stopped using the actual multicam feature. Um, other than all the audio, having all like the audio tracks like attached to like every clip is pretty helpful. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I get it for like raw stuff, like switching between a ceremony if you're delivering like a half hour ceremony mm. or whatever, are totally helpful. Mm. I think for like for a highlights film, I almost think it makes you like lazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's I it, find it, I'm it often like like. Um, I find I'm often not sticking to the strict chronology of it anyway. Like you're exactly. often it's using hard like to get it the reaction and the actual shot, like sort of they're happening at the same time, but you're playing one after the other and yeah, fucking, it's, fucking it's, with time anyway. So a hundred percent. I think it's like, it becomes too, it almost makes it harder. Like you're better off just manually doing mm. it. And then yeah. you don't rely on just like flicking <laughs> to shots because it's easy, you know? Yeah. Cool. All righty. So in terms of your speech selects, um, how are you do- – so do you – because I, I don't use pluralize, so um, maybe talk talk through like once you've like synced up and pluralized, how do you then do your speech selects from that? Oh, yeah. So pluralize and premiere are basically like joined now, so you don't even have to leave premiere to to use pluralize. Like it opens a window in oh, premiere for you, so it's super, super simple. Um, I literally sync like all our audio sources against all our vision, like usually a couple cameras. We don't – usually it's just Andrew. For this one it was Eugene and hmm, someone else. Should know names. <laughs> I'm just the editor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's two cameras for this one, so there was a lot of sync. There's, you know, not heaps of syncing. Um, yeah, sync and pluralize. And then in Premiere, it's literally just, there's no, there's no multicam for me when I go through speeches or anything. I just literally cut what I like and then figure out what the overlay is afterwards. Um, Mm. yeah, it's as simple as that. It's like all slapped onto my timeline, like full speeches is maybe like, you know, whatever, half an hour of them or (laughs) more sometimes, whatever. And then Mm. it's just straight cuts what I like. I'm just pulling up a few layers and what I don't like gets deleted. Yeah. And so how do you like, what's your process in terms of um, ciphering through all those, like all that audio, all those sound bites um, and how do you start to pick them out, order them, arrange them? Like, how do you work through that? How long does that sort of process take? Um, I, it takes a while because I, I give it a few passes. Like I'll listen to all the speeches mm-hmm. in one hit and I am making selects on my first pass um second pass i'll go through so basically it's it's hard to say what you're going to select right because every wedding's different and every speech is different but you know i'm always looking for i mean stories about the couple or stuff that's really candid i'm always looking for like shit that's off the cuff because i feel like that's like a nice Mm. way of showing a person's 
personality rather than telling. Like if you can show it rather than tell it, it's kind of nice. Yeah. Like I always love that that shit. You know, it's like a it's like you know maybe like a mum and dad and they're like someone's like I don't know where my glasses are and mum's like they're here and mm. I don't know all that weird stuff like all that. Yeah, and because you so use that a bit. Yeah, you use that a bit in this film, and you use it yeah. as little like joining elements. You'll do yeah. like speech, and then you'll do like little sound bite, little sound bite like that's recorded just like during the day. And it's like you know five to ten words like here and there, just as little little breaks in between speeches and stuff. Yeah, which is something um, I hadn't actually really been doing, and then I saw it done mm. in a Vimeo staff pick film, and I was like, "Fuck, this is a really cool way to transition between mm. things. Like, give you a small break with something off the cuff, and then push on." Yeah. Ah, it was so cool. That was, I mean, and all that stuff. So there's not always like lots of it. It just depends on the couple and what's happening during the day. But if it's there and you can use it, that's always the best stuff because like Mm. it shows way more personality than something that's scripted, right? Yeah. But in terms of that sort of stuff, because you're not there on the day, it's not like it happens in front of you and you make a mental note to remember it because that's often what I'm doing. If something funny happens, if someone makes a funny joke or someone something happens, I'm like aware of it and make a mental note like, oh, that happened. I'll make yeah, sure I right. go and look for it later. Whereas as an as a strictly as an editor, you know, you, you don't have that experience. So how do you like are you literally cutting through and listening to all the, the like all the footage to find yeah. that stuff? Or are you yeah. or are you just finding it as you go? No, I I like I'm obsessive when I cull footage. I feel like some people rush mm. culling and I'm like, oh, it's like a terrible thing to do because I almost, I, I don't know, I actually think like, you know, that it's actually like a bit of a, I think it's a, almost a good thing if you're not at the wedding or if you're not on set as it were or, what, you know, what have you because then you're forced to go through everything mm. right so you don't miss everything, like you don't miss anything, you know. You can you yeah. kind of pay more attention because you have to. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's it's actually, you know, there's, uh, you know, editors have people cull for them, which I get. Um, yeah. But I think there's always all these little tiny moments that someone else might dismiss but you might think is gold and might serve your edit down the track even if you don't realise at the mm. time. If you've seen it, you can go, oh, actually, I remember that. That would be perfect here, which is what happened a lot with this edit as well. Um, stuff I didn't yeah. even select, I was like, actually, that would be good. So if someone else had a, had a colour that for you, you wouldn't really know about it. So it kind of pays yeah. to put that extra time in. Mm. Which you might Good not have point. to. If you're filming the wedding, you might have an understanding of what's going on, right? But I know Andrew yeah, comes back I, from a wedding and forgets mm. things. Like he's like, oh, I don't even remember that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, fuck, man. A lot, a lot happens. <laughs> yeah. Especially with these the, the sort of weddings that you shoot and then you've got heaps of backlogs so you don't off, like you don't end up touching the edit for weeks after the wedding. You do kind of forget yeah. exactly what happens on the on the day. Yeah. Um, and like it's documentary, is, yeah. so you mm. have to you have to comb through it. Like if you're doing, you know, narrative TV show or something, like there's a hundred takes the same line, and you know what's coming. It's scripted, but this is like unscripted, so you can't dismiss anything. Like everything's mm. on the table for you know everything's up for grabs. So yeah, yeah, you know, the smallest moment might have the funniest one liner. That's just you know, you could just throw away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing. And so, how do you start to like wrangle all this shit. So you've got all these sound bites, you've got like speeches, you've got um, vows and ceremony, you've got like all these little bitty sound bites that you've sort of picked out throughout the day. Um, how are you starting to like group them together? Like are you sort of trying to like theme stuff? Are you just like moving stuff around and seeing what works just like on the fly with, with your gut? Like how are you sort of starting to like collate different, sections and sort of combine different bits of audio um definitely i love to theme stuff (laughs) and it's Mm. um it's literally just straight up like i'll be creating sequences like i've got i'm looking at my little project right now my selects folder has like Mm. 10 different things in it i've got like details sequence the getting ready sequence ceremony sequence which is very normal for me, like, you know, photo sequence, reception sequence, Mm -hmm. speeches, blah, blah, blah. But for this one, I created extras because I kind of had an idea of what tone I wanted to set. So this one has Mm -hmm. a sequence called barrel slash fire shots, like when they're eyeballing the camera and it's (laughs) like they just look fucking hot. Um, So every shot where I just (laughs) literally, that's how basic it is. I saw shots of them. I'm like, this is fucking hot. That goes in the barrel fire shot sequence. Uh, I've got a quirky moments sequence, which is them doing just Mm -hmm. weird stuff. 
And then I've got quirky moments yeah. for random audio grabs. So every candid audio grab is getting dumped straight away into like as I'm culling. If I find mm-hmm. one on my main timeline, you know, in the reception footage, it's getting dumped. It's getting doubled up basically. So it's staying in the reception, but then it's yeah. also getting dumped into this <laughs> random audio grabs yeah. sequence. So at the end, I've essentially got this like, <coughs> fuck, I've got like 50 shots in here of random audio grabs and I can listen through at the end and go, okay, what can play off a speech in the film? What can play off a lyric mm. in the film? You know, I think there's a part where yeah. it's like the lyrics go 40 love and then I've got a thing of her going, that's what she said. Um, yeah. Which doesn't even make sense, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, I can that's go, what, okay, what's, what goes with that? <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. That's what I, because when I heard that too, I was like, that works. But, but, but at the same time, I was like, it doesn't. Does that make sense? <laughs> if I, have, it's just that's random and kind of have, funny. Have, have, have I missed the reference? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know no, what the reference I was, but I was like, it, it just kind of works somehow. It just, it just, it just works. It works. Yeah, I was working overtime yeah. to put in candid stuff. Like I don't usually put mm. in that much, so this one I was like, anywhere where yeah. it where it could go, it can go. <laughs> mm. No, cool. Alrighty. Um, w- there was one thing I saw, um, on your stories as you were making the film, um, or like after you made it, you posted something about um the different skeletons and someone picked it out on the questions on Instagram too, how you sort of, I guess, made different like versions of the film. Do you want to talk through that idea of like making different skeletons and um, how they're different, how you like, I guess that part of your creative process? Yeah. Um, I just think it's habit for me from like non wedding work days. Like I used to work at an ad agency, not even for that long, but mm. it, it definitely stuck. But um, it's yeah. basically just a habit of like, so my, my idea of like, I don't even, I think people start calling it a skeleton, but I don't even think that's the actual word, just what I made up. But anyway, <laughs> it's just basically um, a skeleton to me is just the speeches against the audio and that's it, nothing else. So it's like the bare bones of your narrative mm. um, without any B-roll or vision over it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so basically... I felt the benefit of like duplicating your skeletons. Like I've got, I'm looking at it now. I've got like <clears throat> 12 versions of my narrative or skeleton for yeah. this project, which is alarmingly large. Usually there's about five <laughs> or six, right? But um, this one had a lot. But um, it's basically so that I can be creative without worrying about losing any of my work. So every time I change something, it gets duplicated mm-hmm. into a new sequence. Um, so that if I like something, if I go, actually, this is shit, I want to go back three versions, I can. And it's literally yeah. as simple as that. But um, that's more of a client. That's more of a thing outside of weddings. Like, you know, when you're, if you've got a client and you send them like whip mm-hmm. you know, work in progress five, every fucking yeah. time they come back, they're like, actually, I would like whip three with a mixture of whip one and mix <laughs> and bit of five. And you're like, yeah. if you don't have that in your edit, if you haven't meticulously filed things, you're fucked. Um, yeah. So it's always good to yeah, duplicate yeah. your work. <laughs> oh yeah, every time, in any time, any time a client, whether it's wedding or anything, asks for changes, you duplicate your project before you change it because they're like at least always. twenty Even to thirty percent. Twenty to thirty yeah. percent of the time, they'll say, "Actually, you, you know what? You were right. Let's go back to how it was." And like, <laughs> oh, 100%. I can't just it's, go back to how it was now. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that's your yeah. fault, not theirs. So that's when you get yeah. fucked up. But um, as yeah. well, like this this yeah. project, I don't for weddings usually when I make a change, I'm pretty confident because I'm like, oh yes, I'm excited. This would be better, and I don't have to backpedal. But for this mm. one, Shamara and Tyler's, I backpedaled yeah. a fuckload because the skeleton was so in depth, mm. and I would try different things. Um, basically, it's like you can go through your whole thing and then you can look at it and go, how can I make it better? And keep stripping it and stripping it and replacing yeah. things, replacing speeches, going that extra mm. little mile. Sometimes it's shit, a, so yeah. you have to go back. Th- this is a complicated this is a complicated film and um like I because I kind of picked out maybe five or six like distinct sort of chapters yeah. in the film, sort of sections. Um, and like they're, they're, they're sort of combined and, and melded and done in a way that like, I don't know how they would go in different order. Like there's, there's, they probably like could, there's no like strict chronology or anything going on that sort of dictates that they have to be in this sort of order, but, um, it just kind of works. So is that, was it a case that you that you defined them in those sections and you were moving those sections around or like how are you sort of backpedaling some of the sort of structural 
elements. Yeah, I this almost like a backwards edit for me because usually I do things in like as you say chapters. Like I'll create big mm. chunks and then work out how to connect them. This one was actually yeah. a bit different. Like more more my shuffling was on the speeches, but the music was pretty solid. Like I wanted mm. it to. Oh, it's so weird. Like I, yeah, this one I'd seen a film where this was how they cut it, and there was no like. There's no pause. Like usually when I edit, like a lot of our films, if you watch, it's in big chapters. Like yeah, a song finishes, but, big pause, yeah, punchline. But then line. there's a breath and then there's the next so- song will sort of come in or like you'll there'll be a breath and then there'll be some dialogue and then the f- yes. music will come in. But, yeah, this was like no fucking rest where it's like song, song, song <laughs> yeah. um, and the song's just, cut off real quick and it was it's, – it's beautifully done. It's really – it's just – it's – I guess like confident is the word I would use. It's just like confidently cut. It's just yeah. really cool to see. Yeah. That is cool. That's oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, is uh, I actually this one was really fun because I felt like I hit a point last year where I didn't feel like I was learning anymore and I was a bit like mm. a bit pessimistic. I was like, oh, I feel like I've hit like my little, you know, that I've plateaued. Like I can't learn anything else about editing for this genre time to move on but actually this one was like a big wake-up call for me and in a really good way because I actually learned a fuckload like I saw a film where I was like oh my god that's that's really good editing I need to do that like I I don't do that and I've just learned something and so I got to test all of that in this film which is like fuck it's like gratifying to do something different like and to actually challenge yourself do you know what I mean yeah yeah absolutely because I sort of felt a somewhat similar way um, before like revamping the podcast, getting into season two of the podcast yes. and like meeting all these new people and like, and like, like hearing that their work and like, just, I guess, sort of like forcing myself to be exposed to like filmmakers from like all over the world and realizing like there's so much new ideas <laughs> and so much other stuff that can be done. Yes, um, it's been it. really cool. Yeah. It is nice. Like it's, God, because we do our jobs for so long. I'm going so off topic here, but like you do get stagnant, like, and you start to resent the things that you used to be so grateful that you could do. And so it's so refreshing to go one day, fuck, there's a lot more I can do here. It's nice. Mm. Yeah. It's natural too to, I guess, get fatigue. That's fine. Like we're allowed to have fatigue and we're allowed to be bored. (laughs) But 100%. Yeah. Can, not that yeah, I'm ever bored by my couples. Of, yeah. It's not that. It's, it's no, just, it's not. No. It's yeah. by being almost too good at your job. It's by being so, like, on top of what you do that you're not challenged by it. Like, you're creating great yeah. work, yes, but are you moving forward with your career per se? Maybe not. Mm. So are you just saying that you're too good? No, I literally just said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is gross, Carmona. <laughs> I am too good. <laughs> All right, cool. We're just going to leave the, the episode there and I'm going to get some T-shirts modest. printed with Grace is too good. Not a modest cool. person. I do not have modest family uh, around fuck, me. Fuck I blame modesty. them. No, it's, <laughs> it's all good. Um, music. We talked about it a little bit before in terms of like cutting between the songs and I mentioned at the start of the show that there's nine tracks in this. Um, one of the questions that someone put forward was um, how you – make sure all the music works together. And I thought that was really good because like Mm. all of the tracks in this film, like they hit hard. Nothing's just like ambient or um, it's all like, and I guess like you were saying how you like you figured out the music and you were sort of trying to fit the speeches into that. It kind of has that feel where like the music's this own sort of character and it's manipulated in such a strong way. Um, how are you making sure that each track went from one to the other and that they all sort of had this sort of cohesive feel to them? Oh, my God, such a <laughs> such a big <laughs> question. Um, mm-hmm. Fuck, where do you start? Um, ba- I don't know. It's so hard. Basically, like it's a lot of um, matching beats and things like that, like making sure – yeah, that's even bullshit. I think mostly is using sound effects with your music, right? Which I don't think a lot of people do, but to the degree that mm. like if you're going to fade out a song, usually I would just fade it out, put a nice punchline, start the next song, but I didn't want to do that. I was like, no, Grace, you do that all the time. You're not allowed to do that for this edit. Um, so this one was very much like layering the music on top of each other. 
it's so hard, you know, when you're trying to look for songs that play off each other and match, a lot of it's in matching all the beats, like similar tempo. So maybe the end of a song goes bang, 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 and the start of the next song goes bang, 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 and you can overlay mm-hmm. those drums. Like I was very specific in trying to find that stuff. Um, also it's using like if you can use similar so- – like if you can use three songs by the same artist – you're guaranteed mm. to be able to cut them however the fuck you want really. Like they're going to be cohesive, they're going to make sense. Like I think in this one I have like three songs by the same artist that, in there, so that's mm. there's going to have similarities in the way they produce their music, right? Um, yeah. Do you do you ever give yourself, um, I guess, can like constraints in terms of um, instruments or um, genres or anything like that? Oh, it's like a weird mix of like doing what the couple wants, like what they like and what I like. For this one, I had already flagged two songs before we even shot their wedding and it was probably like fucking like nearly a year out from their wedding. I had these songs ready. Um, I don't even know why. We had a chat with them and I was just like I heard a song and I was like this is them and mm. I, don't, I don't know. It's just as simple as that. Like I knew that they would pull it off. Like sometimes you find really big tracks like that, that opening kind of one that <sighs> – that kind of Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know that where he's kind of talking the song um, over the. So is that in the song? It's not like a, I, an, an extra sound bite that you pulled. The song. The 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 so where it's like um the that that like talking. Like yeah, before she it, says, I, I don't believe in sonnets. Yeah, 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 that song, the time one. No, that is just how the song is. So that song I had found yeah. probably a year before their wedding. I heard it and mm. I went, this is really cool. No one can pull this off. And then we met these guys mm. and like, these guys can pull it off. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, it's you like know, spoken word poetry. It is. Almost. It and, is. I yeah. actually think that's the category it's under. It's under spoken word on music bed. Oh, um, it's fucking cool. It's the sickest song. And I was like, fuck, I want to use this because mm. it actually sounds like a something you expect in the intro of like Baz Luhrmann's like, you know, the yeah. Roman Juliet, like Star-Crossed Lovers. Mm. And I was like, this is so cool, but I'm never going to be able to use it probably, um, which is also another good point. If you find a cool song, awesome, but don't force it on people just because you want to use don't it. Don't just check on Yep. God, no. Um, and these guys could pull it off and I'm like, I just know this will be really fun to play with for them. Um, yeah, and also, you know, they'd filled out their form pre-wedding and written down what music they like and what music they don't like. And the one that threw me is like they liked EDM and I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming from you. And so that influenced a good half of the edit. Like I wouldn't have gone looking for that. I might have, but like not to the degree I did. Like I was like, cool, EDM, yeah. that's, that's fucking psychotic beats. Like this will be so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, as if you're going to say no yeah. to that. So I just, I mean, yeah. I found a bunch of, I think the band in Music Bed's called Yuppie Cult. <laughs> And mm-hmm. they have the sicker songs. One of them's called Tennis Pros, and that's the song in it. And the, you know, it's like 40 Love and all this weird yeah. fucking cheering tennis stuff. So, I mean, it's a mixture of like doing what you, music you love and then also acknowledging what the couple likes. Mm. And it's Sweet. just a lot of listening to music. Just, <laughs> you just, yeah. you got to spend a few days just trolling. Mm. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, like, I, I like it. You're saying, and I think you've mentioned it before around like, finding the beats that sort of match and <clears throat> how they can play, like how the, how the songs can play off it, each other. Songs from the same artist is definitely, definitely a if safe If you can bet. do it, I've done that do before. It. Yeah, if you can do it, yeah. Yeah, I think um, yeah. the, I think like uh, this one, I, it's funny because I'm like trying to explain stuff like I know how it works, but this one like I actually learned heaps about sound effects, so it's like new for me. Mm. But I, um. I got really heavy on sound effects as a way to transition music, which I'd never really thought of before. Mm. I've, I've used them to like amplify a part of a song, but not to transition songs. So I went on a big yeah, troll um, to find big um, like whooshes and, you know, weird glitches and noises that I could use to actually cut between music. Um, mm. Also, should, if you haven't actually before checked out Soundly, Soundly is awesome. For sound oh, effects, yeah. for sound effects and stuff, cool. Yeah, yeah so you can literally I'm like get a sound effect. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely oh, sorry, g- can... guilty of like seeing edits that use loads of sound effects and going, "Fuck, that's epic!" and then proceeding to not use sound effects <laughs> yeah. in my edits. So am I. That's why this one was so <laughs> yeah. like hectic. Yeah, <laughs> mm. it's I don't know. It's it's like a bit of an untapped resource. Like if your edit can be like mm. an eight out of ten, but if you can also like 
give everything a sound, not just like in the music and the ambient audio. Like if you can give it a sound effect, it's going to take it from like a 10 to a 20. So it's, yeah, that was what this one was for me. And I'd actually found songs, like a song I'd use on music, but it had like this weird building, like a, yeah, like a kind of weird build. <laughs> Sorry, that's yeah. so fucked. It sounded like a fly. <laughs> I can't, I can't mimic music. Um, anyway, yeah. it was like a fucking weird ambient build halfway through that amounts to nothing and then it stops and then it kicks into another song or, you know, the chorus. And I ended up using that as a sound bite and turning it into a sound effect and using it throughout the edit. So, like, anything's up for grabs, right? Especially mm. a sound effect that has, like, a build to it. Does that make sense? I think I'm yeah. rambling. <laughs> no, 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 I I get it. I get it. I'm, absolutely. I just, I'm just feeling guilty for not using sound effects. <laughs> It's fun. fun. It's time consuming, it's a, it's, but it's fun. It's it's on it's it's on the list of self improvement chores. We're, we're going to get it done. I we're believe in you. Done. I believe in you. Yeah, well, we can do it. We can you got it, it girl. <laughs> okay. Um. Cool. Moving right along. Down down the line. Um. This question is from me. We're we're we're, we're onto some questions now that I've just I'm going to pick your brain. So, um. You, you, you've got a lot of quick cuts, a lot of quick, quick cuts in this. Whenever I try and do quick cuts, I never do them quick enough because I'm scared people aren't going to like read what's going on. It's going to feel too fast. Um, it's going to feel like – it's just going to feel like a mess. <laughs> and so how do you – like you've got st- stuff here that I'm like play playing back frame by frame. There's a – what was it? There was a transition between like one scene and another scene. It was like a nighttime scene to them kissing. And in between that, there's like two frames of the groom of Tyler, like uh, waiting for her to walk down the aisle. And there's yeah, all these no, like crazy quick cuts. So like how, like how are you deciding to be that aggressive with the quick cuts? What was the um, sort of thought process there? Literally it's down to music. Um, it, it you can't yeah it quick cuts are, are hard because if you you know if you fuck them up they're just they're, they're awkward and they look out of place and mm. you know but for this one yeah well f- all the time if you're going to do quick cuts it's no point doing them if you don't have the music or the sound to back it up so it's all relying mm. on the music you probably all the quick cuts you hear in this have a glitch or a sound effect on them um, or they're playing into what's happening in the music maybe the music's building and as it's building we're going bang 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 and then we're stopping. So yeah. it's it's literally just related to sound. If the song didn't do that, there's mm. no way I'd be doing quick cuts there because it would just be – it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But is it – was it a deliberate sort of um, textural addition? Because like the, the, the example I'm thinking of, so we're, we're at 39 seconds. 30. We go from this like beautiful twisting nighttime shot. Um, the camera then pans up to the sky – we cut to literally a frame of Tyler looking up the aisle. Next frame is a shot of the guests, and then the next frame is um, Shamara walking dead down the aisle. Like they're different shots. Yeah, like you sort of would have deliberately chosen to do a like literally one frame of a different shot, and yeah. like when you play it back in real time, it just adds this like glitchy texture. But like. How? What? What? <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it a deliberate like like move to like make it feel gl- glitchy? Like, yeah, what made you choose that extra different shot there? Yeah, yeah it, was. it was deliberate. Oh. Yeah, it was. It was. It was deliberate. I think. Hang on. Just let me give it a quick listen. I think it's literally when the music goes vroom. Like, yeah. It's, so when the yeah. music bottoms out, so the chorus is finished. We've gone vroom into a verse. Yeah. And so on that vroom. Yeah or what have you, yeah. I've got a transition. The reason I've chosen that particular two frames of that shot, it is a shot of him looking yeah. at her coming down the aisle and I, yeah. you see that straight after you see her. So that same shot we've just used the yeah. glitch on. We go Shamara coming down the aisle and then it's that same shot just smooth after. Yeah. Um, part of it's just like because it makes life easier and continuity-wise it's got the same colouring exposure and everything yeah. like that. If you can steal a... Mm transition from the same scene that you're transitioning into that's what you want to mm-hmm. do because everything's it just bleeds together better um that's really the extent of it it's just using a fuck up in camera like someone's re you know eugene's readjusting he's got the he's got 
Tyler and Shotten is readjusting, but that movement, mm. that quick flick is is now like a great way to transition. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've used the the camera movement, the blur of that. You grabbed two frames of that for a textural element to then, but because the 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 scene's the same, the lighting's the same. Yeah, it's the colors it's more are the seamless. same. It just matches. It's more yeah. Yeah, it's oh, like you know when people that, shoot their yeah, own Jesus. people shoot their own um light leaks you know you might be shooting yeah. at night and then you might get yeah, light yeah. leaks from that same light because you know it's going to work better it's mm. the same for editing like if you're going to transition to a scene use the lighting that you've got use the scene that you've got to mm -hmm. use that transition um this one like that transition those it's literally two frames of tyler into her walking down the aisle i think that's sped up yeah. by like two three hundred percent Mm. Um, yeah, so it's just this like crazy. It's sped up, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not just as shot, it, but it is it, like like w w w when you play it back, it just it basically acts like a flash, yeah, kind of like a film burn. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's like a, a yeah. fucking uh, just a big. It's it's like moving your camera from left to right. So like yeah. on your timeline, it is like moving from left to right from shot. Mm. You know, pushing people yeah. over to the next scene. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love all those little fuck ups in camera because they're oh. the best, best little things to mm. play with. <laughs> yeah, that's no, cool. It's very cool. It's, I was just like, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> why? <laughs> man, what? What? And the shots before yeah. that little transition. So you see Tyler, mm. the, the, you know, that mm. shot where it's spinning and they're kissing at sunset. Yeah. It, mm. the end of that shot. That's that's slow mode at fifty percent. And then it speeds up to 300 mm -hmm. and it's Eugene finishing yeah. his shot. He's just pulling away. So a transition works better when you're joining two transitions. Do you know what I mean? So we yeah. finish one shot, we swipe out of it, camera fuck up, but cool. And then we mm. swipe into the next thing. It just, it's, it's a bit more seamless yeah. that way. Just, just more, more movement, more, more yeah. energy. Less jarring. And you've got these like energetic bits of music. Like that's what you, what you yeah. want. And again, yeah, it has to be with mm. with a good moment of music, like a big boom or something, because yeah. otherwise it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fucking random. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so getting to the n near the end of my questions here, but one of the ones I was interested to um, get your opinion on is, I guess, similar to the like making sure the music all fits together. It was it was around like the the effects the things the like the little editing tricks that you did how do you decide like how many you're going to do how you're going to split them across the edit um so that nothing feels gimmicky because like none of the th things in the film in terms of like speed ramping the little like glitch effects um the text uh the little candid sound bites from people the um oh man there's all sorts of there's like there's, there's basically like a handful of like five or six recurring effects throughout the film um that were like unique and textural and like stand out but like how do you i guess make sure that none of those things feel gimmicky and that you like do you give yourself a quota of like sort of standout effects or are you just like you know, how are you sort of judging that whole thing? Um, I do – this one was I was really specific for. I knew I wanted to do some glitchy effects and that was almost like the theme of the film. Like the glitch was like a transition between nearly mm. everything. Um, it's so hard. Like I honestly just – wherever it fits it's the same as before wherever it fits with the music like it's uh, you can't just shove it in for no reason but i was was conscious of making sure that it was a running theme so you know i actually had finished the edit and i realized hey it actually needs a few extra of these kind of glitches and these kind of transitions visually i mean the audio was cemented mm -hmm. but they need, so i added in a couple of extra little things at the end to balance it out and make sure yeah. it's consistent but i think like anything it's mm -hmm. like if you've got an idea and you want it, like it's like getting a new toy, like, you, you know, if you mm. overuse it, like it's just, you know, it becomes yeah. redundant, you know, you don't want to see it so much that it's boring. So you've just got to kind of be, mm. use it sparingly and it has more impact. Um, this is just, I try to keep that in mind when I edit as well. This one's pretty yeah. Yeah, eff effect heavy. Yeah, it's effect heavy, but it's like, it's restrained in terms of the like, types of effects you, you use the same type of stuff again and again to the point where it feels like a theme for the film rather than just 
a random like like for example you've got like match cuts throughout and you've done a lot of different sorts of match cuts um which just feel like a theme throughout the throughout the film like i remember doing like a match kit a match cut in one of my other films but it, well, that was the only t- time it happened i didn't like keep doing it and i'm yeah. definitely guilty of that where like i'll do an effect but i like do it once and not like give myself sort of a suite of effects and like scatter them throughout the film to make it i guess a cohesive like feel yeah Um, because like the film you posted before this one has got like alien memes and like like (laughs) text to speech (laughs) like effect you know like but none of that stuff's in this film that's like unique to um yeah the couple yeah are you just sort of deliberately like sort of um sort of like deciding like how many unique sort of bits and bobs go into each film like in terms of you know are you was there a moment in this edit that you felt like "Mm, that's probably too much i'll take i won't do a new thing i'll go back to one of the things i've already been um playing with yeah oh there was there was for sound effects i had Mm. way too many sound effects in at one stage and i'm like grace chill you need to start repeating some rather than putting in all this shit Mm -hmm. um so that's good but then i always feel like it's better to put more in because it's easier to strip things back than add to it um you you Mm -hmm. can easily take things out i think um god i don't know i for each couple it's like i never go in going oh this is like i don't i don't have a standard of what I do for each film, which I think is a nice way to approach it because you want to tailor it for the couple, not for what is gratifying for you. Do you know what I mean? So like Mm. the alien one was completely because of the couple, like that is purely came from them. Like if, Mm. you know, they weren't the couple that would never, never have happened. Shamar and Tyler's, I just knew they were (laughs) going to be boss and fucking stylized and they Mm. put meticulous detail into their wedding, like more than we usually get for a lot of weddings. So I did the same. I put meticulous detail into every little process because that's what they've done mm. and it suits them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, it's, it's cool. And just like, I'm just like, cause I've just got the film like playing now while I'm talking and just n- like noticing like so many of the shots have the, just this, the, the slow digital zoom. Yeah. Added to them. So this is the, like, this is <laughs> breath where like, you'll have like, three shots that all like zoom in zoom in zoom in and then like a couple of shots that go like zoom out zoom out zoom out so it's almost like this sort of like breathe in breathe out effect happening um with the footage yes that's actually what i was trying um, to do that's so cool <laughs> mm, yeah no, it, it, it it works and stuff and then and then you have a break from it and then there's shots that don't have the zoom in zoom out because that would get tedious if you just for every yeah. single shot I had to strip myself um, back on the zooms because I got I got a little zoom happy. I actually picked that up from our podcast, yeah. The Fire and Ice. They, I'm like, thanks guys. Yeah. Um, that was them <laughs> saying, you know, put your 4K footage in your 1920 by 1080 timeline, and then you can do mm. whatever the fuck you want with it. And I was like, oh, yeah. yes, Queen. Like, who cares yeah. about exporting in 4K? You, <laughs> yeah. When you Is can- that how you got some of the match cuts? Because like some of those yeah. match cuts are fucking on point. Yeah, like, yeah, it's dead set from that. Like it's you got 4K, yeah. you can zoom, you can shift something from literally from the left of the side screen to the right side. Like there is fair game. Like as long as they're positioned relatively yeah. similar, it doesn't matter where the fuck they are in the frame because you can just make them be mm. where you want to be. So yeah, that was a nice discovery. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Mm. <laughs> now I'm doing nice. it like way more because I'm like, ah, oh, that just opens up mm. so much more creativity. Um, I love it. I love a little hack. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's the name of the game, right? Finding finding those little, little tools for for the toolkit. Yes. Also, sidebar: um, um, there mm. is a Hungarian rock song in this edit, and I just wanted to to say that because I I thought it was hilarious and amazing. <laughs> Sweet. Fuck yeah! Love it. it just brought me joy. It was actually the first time I've actually yeah. paid for a song to that degree, and mm. I was like. Fuck yeah, the song's great. It needs to, yeah. needs to happen. I'm gonna pay through the nose for it. <laughs> yeah. Did that come from the c- couple, or is just, you found it? And no, I just found it. I just I saw it in another film, some a Vimeo staff pick, and I was like, "Fuck, this song mm-hmm. is amazing. I need to use it." Licensed yeah. it. Um, probably the only not music bed song, but that's probably you know it was just I don't know and the couple mm. loved um it was an instrumental track and the couple said they loved instrumentals like really cinematic yeah. stuff so nice yes fun Sweet. anyway music buff I get so excited I'm like oh my god did you hear this song 
Yeah. <laughs> Everyone needs to hear Sweet. the song. Yeah. Love it. Rant over. Cool. All right. Well, um, last last question from me, and it's similar to the to the last one, but it's I guess more holistically about the film. I guess in terms of like the B roll footage, um, and you've got the fact that you've got these different sort of chapters, and there's definite because this is something I often struggle with when I come to editing is there's like when you've got the um, speeches and the dialogue and um, you obviously have certain footage that relates to um, to that and you want to like show different parts of the day um, and not just like randomly scatter all the footage across the whole film. Yeah. Um, how are you like portioning out footage and deciding what sort of types of footage are going to be just in their own little section. For example, like there's a section with just like the getting ready footage and that's the only time it appears. And there's a, a section with just the footage of her um, singing and playing the k- keyboard and that doesn't appear any other time. And there's footage of like the bridal party hanging out in a big semicircle and like laughing and that doesn't appear any other time. So like how are you sort of – picking out like sections of the day and and going that's like like all the good footage of that is going to just be in this little section and then um how you figure like sort of figure out like what sort of footage is going to be that and then what sort of footage is going to be scattered across the whole film obviously there's things like like you know like the portrait sessions and all that sort of like banger yeah. you know down the barrel Free footage crawl. is going to go yeah it's good going to go across the whole film um but yeah, how are you sort of distinguishing distinguishing that? Because that's something that I definitely sort of try and what I struggle with having a really clear idea as to like my decisions as to like what footage gets sectioned out and what fo- what sorts of footage gets spread across the whole film. Yeah, it's a tough one. I feel like that's a good question about like non-linear editing because it, you're right. Like mm. it is easy to have all this footage and then just have no continuity. You could just you could basically put anything anywhere. So mm. people are a bit like, oh, it's not chronological because it can start to get confusing if you don't. Yeah. Basically, okay, basically that's yeah. You're right. So the photography session stuff is scattered. That's a free for all. You can put that basically anywhere because it's stuff of the couple together. So it's always relevant mm. in my head. Uh, getting yeah. ready, they're separate and it's with, you know, ran- you know, different people so it's outside of the couple and I feel like those are good opportunities to slow your edit down and to slow yourself down mm-hmm. and have a more cohesive sequence. Um, probably when you've seen those sequential sequences like just getting ready, just, you know, X, Y, Z, that's usually probably mm-hmm. after a really hectic sequence of everything. Yeah. So that's a way to just give people a, a breather. Yes. Cleanser, yeah. B- 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 totally. B- 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 breather yeah otherwise it is yeah. really hard to keep up like chrono not yeah non-linear editing can be amazing but then a lot of people can really go overboard and all of a sudden you've got a shot from every part of the day going for over a minute and you're like where the fuck am i so you've got to yeah. be conscious of that and use those moments when they're not together to slow it down that's that's kind of what i do yeah no, i think that, that that's a good good point and that's something that i see a lot when people like um, send films through and stuff for review. Um, there's no breath, there's no peaks and valleys. There's just like yeah. one type of film, like hits play, and that just, that energy just continues the whole way through from start to finish. Yeah, there's and no it's, it can be it can be stressful. Like you you you're yeah. just like <gasps> okay, this is, I need to stop. I need yeah. to catch up. <laughs> this and which is funny because mm. this film I'd made so that there weren't breaks with the way the sound was built, but that's not the case with the vision. Like I, you can't mm. you can't just go 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 party 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 or whatever. Even if it's all you know emotional romantic the whole way through, even that can get tedious. So you have to have a bit yeah. of like a bit of balance. Um, and sometimes it is as simple as balancing out in terms of like. I have this amount of family to include, like this is their immediate family. I need to make sure I I give them a sequence because, you know, you want to see your loved ones mm. on screen. And every time I don't do that, every fucking time, the one time I don't yep, do it, the couple's like, asked. can you put this yeah. in? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I can put that in. 
of course. Um, mm. But that's, a, I mean, that's good to keep in mind too. Like, you know, the sequences like post-ceremony when people are hugging like might seem trivial to mm. you, but they're so important to include because it's a really great way to include faces that aren't the couple because even just seeing the couple all the time through the edit can get tedious. Like you need a break yeah. from them almost. Like you need to break it up. So mm. breaking it up with other faces, breaking it up with just detail shots is a really good way to give us a breather. Like I think there's a sequence yeah. there where it's just detail shots of the venue for a little bit so it gives you not a face mm. to engage with. It just gives you a cactus to look at, <laughs> a nice strange yeah. shot. So it's a really good way to bridge mm. your sections. Yeah, I, did, I didn't really probably think about it that way, but that's a really good point in terms of like, because I would usually um, reach to grabbing um, different types of music or different like, yeah, well, but yeah, basically different types of music to distinguish my um, energy shifts. Mm. Um, I didn't sort of, I guess, think about the difference between like chronological and non-chronological visual sequences being sort of, you know, peaks and valleys in themselves. Yeah, because like, the audio is like the first layer of doing that. Like you can slow people mm. down with different tempos and different music and that's that works, but then you've mm. got to take it a step further and that's how you keep building better and better. And yeah. it's like, well, how can you visually mm. mimic that as well? Yeah, that's that's great. Really cool. Work it. All right. Well, I think that's going to do us for today. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I mean, fuck, that was awesome. I hope that, uh, you know, satisfied some people who were, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, b- blowing up your DMs on Instagram about this edit. It was certainly a... Uh, a unique one and one that stood out and um yeah I, I could i could definitely see that you i don't know it's yeah i guess i i said i said it before i'll say it again it was confident editing confident cutting <laughs> um yeah it just it's exci- it was excitable awesome to watch. Cu- yeah. cu- cutting it's like when you're excited to be learning you're like oh my god i'm gonna do yeah. this now like i yeah. think that's yeah that's yeah, so fun. That hopefully cool. people learn something. I don't know. Hopefully I haven't rambled like a psycho. I tend to do nah, that. Well, I certainly have. I've I've picked up some things, so um I'm sure other people at, at home have too. Yeah, man. Epic. This has been so fun. Cool. I love our little chats. <laughs> yeah, man. It's been good. <laughs> Looking forward to the next one. But um yeah, all right. Well, um I think this is probably gonna do us. Um make sure you guys uh go check out uh, our sponsor for the episode of Music Bed. Um, obviously, barring the um, Hungari- Hungarian rock instrumental, <laughs> every track in the film, every tra- track in the film is from Music Bed. So yeah, if you want some epic tunes for your films, musicbed.com, Use the promo code MBWF to get your first month free. Try out some e- epic songs. See if it's for you. Um, and uh, yeah, if you like the show, if you like what we do, f- feel free to go to patreon.com forward slash MBWF and support the show we would love to have you get you on a little private patreon um q a thread um you know pick our guest brains and just um yes yeah, support the show help us um keep, keep the lights on and be here for the long haul um yeah other than that i just I, I, only thing left to say is uh thank you grace for thank your you, time babe. letting <laughs> us all pick your brain um yeah well, it was awesome mate Epic, so fun. Until next time, cool. friend. <laughs> Until next time, friends. Alrighty, that's gonna do us team. See you all next time. Bye. Bye.